Maxime, welcome. Uh, great to have you here and, and thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. How are you? Uh, thank you. Yes, everything is okay and I'm okay. Thank you. That is all we need to know at the moment. The fact that you're okay is, is brilliant news. Now, Matt, we've got so much that we want to talk to Maxime about and not a lot of time to do it in. So where do you want to start? <laughs> Well, obviously, the, this has been a bit of a mystery. So we've been building up to this interview, Maxine, for, for quite a while on the podcast. Um, and the main thing we want to do is, is look forward, but then also take a bit of time to look at your past. So, Maxine, what are your thoughts on the, the coming season? You know, Champions League 21, uh, obviously all the Russian competitions. What are your hopes and, and thoughts for the coming season? Uh, I think it's a real bit interesting season. Uh, because uh, in Russian Champions League, uh, Championship uh, comes a lot of uh, famous people, a lot of famous uh, players, and uh, it will be strong and maybe stronger uh, than before. And uh, I don't know about Liga Champions, and uh, we will see what will be in the uh, Italian league because it's uh, one of the greatest league. And uh, Russian uh, league uh, often compete with uh, Italian league in final four or in final. Yes, it usually is Russia and Italy leading the way in the Champions League. Um, and it was in 2019 in the, the Super Finals as well. Um, but last year, 2020, obviously the season did not finish. But it didn't go as planned for Zenit Kazan, did it? losing in the, the pool phase in the fourth round. So, yes, you, you didn't lose out on a medal because there were no medals, but it, it certainly didn't go to plan. What, what are your thoughts on last season? Uh, yes, uh, we had some problem. It was one problem um, that I played like receiver. Yes, it's because I usually I play like opposite and uh, I need uh, some practice, but uh, we didn't have time for practice. And uh, we had a lot of games. And uh, one reason uh, that we played very bad in League of Champions. Okay, but it's an uh, experience, bad experience for us. And um, I think um, we, uh, we, do, uh, we do something for... Uh, change the situation in the future. So you do feel then that that one bad season was just the exception and you will be able to return to those great hikes that you're used to with Zenit Kazan? Uh, I believe, of course, I want and uh, we will work hard, maybe harder than before, but uh, we want, uh, our team wants return. Yeah. Yeah. So looking looking forward then to 2021, do you you know that you play for Zenit Kazan? Do you know whether you go back to opposite or do you stay as a, a receiver? Or has the coach not had that discussion yet? Uh, no, I, I prefer, of course, opposite because uh, it's, uh, for me, the receiver is uh, uh, the difficult, uh, uh, the difficult player. In, uh, in the court and uh, you need to uh, have good receive of course but I don't have this one option and of course uh, for me more easy to play on op in opposite and it uh, will be better for our team I think. When you were younger Maxime what position did you play when you were a teenager? Um... Uh, I was a uh, receiver yeah, yeah. but it's, but it's uh, it was another volleyball, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, not uh, we don't have Leon, Grozer, some <laughs> great uh, people who can serve uh, one and thirty uh, kilometer more. <laughs> now it's difficult. <laughs> uh, good, oh, very good. Uh, let's talk Olympics then, shall we? Because you've had amazing success over the years of course that gold medal in London but we're looking to the future and the summer of 2021 is Tokyo something that you have your mind on do you plan on being there uh, I 
I don't mind this uh, because uh, uh, we um, we had a lot of tournaments in the season, and uh, uh, when I heard about uh, change the time of Olympic Games, it uh, it was enduring my season, and I uh, think only about season. Okay, but uh, I think it's not bad for me, of course, because uh, when uh, we talked before, uh, at this season I played like receiver and uh, I need some experience uh, in the season like opposite before, uh, because I will play like opposite in national team and uh, that's why it's not bad for me. How is an Olympic year different, Maxime? Because... Obviously, you, you start every season the same, but you know at the end of the year, you've got this massive event. So is an Olympic year, when you, when you go towards an Olympic Games, different in any way? Uh, yes, I think it's a different season um, uh, because, um, for example, our championship um, preparing a special uh, schedule for us um, because we need... Um, to have a time for preparing uh, before Olympic Games uh, and sometimes uh, the season before Olympic Games uh, shorter than uh, usually seasons. With regards to the Champions League then, you've had unbelievable success both personally and the team with Zenit Kazan. Is it five gold medals? You've been MVP at least twice in that competition too. What do you put that success down to? Uh, we try to uh, play hard every game, every tournament. I think uh, uh, Zenit Kazan uh, is uh, one of the best play, uh, clubs because uh, they want to win uh, everything, I think. And, and you get to play with some great players as well. Um, you... Uh... I was going to say, do you have any favorite teammates? But maybe that's the wrong question. <laughs> who have you enjoyed? Who have you enjoyed playing with the most uh, at Zenit Kazan? Uh, yes, I enjoyed, uh, of course, because I play here uh, for ten years, and if I didn't enjoy play here, I change the club, of course. What was your club before Zenit Kazan? Did you have another club? Because online, I cannot find any information. Uh, yes, I played in Yaroslav, but it's uh, not the biggest club, but a lot of young uh, players um, graduated from there. Uh, do you know, maybe Berishko, Grankin, Astapinka, uh, yeah. there, yes, was in Yaroslav with me. And they, Yaroslav uh, was uh, one of the best young school for players. And how old were you when you came to Zenit Kazan? Uh, I was uh, 22 okay. years old. So young. Yeah. So young. <laughs> but, but 10 years, 10 years is incredible. That doesn't happen very often in volleyball. We see players changing teams sometimes after one season or two seasons. What is it about Zenit Kazan that's kept you there for that? such a long amount of time i think uh, all people who works in this club uh, want the same goal i think it's uh, it's com comfortable for me to play here because uh, if you want uh, uh, or ask something immediately uh, do this and uh, it's easy and uh, also like i uh, said before it's uh, um, more important for me uh, what, uh, that uh, Zenit Kazan wants to uh, win everything. And I uh, do the same. <laughs> You've done a good job so far. Uh, what, what's the atmosphere around uh, the club and the team then when you don't win? Because I know it's a rarity, but there have been some more successful Russian club teams in the Champions League this season. And I know you've won five Champions Leagues, but there have been three where you haven't won um, when you've got to the final fours. So how does it feel at the end of the season when you don't get those big victories? 
it's, uh, of course, it's um, not good for us. We understand this, but it's life. And since I said before, it's experience, okay? Um, it's impossible to win uh, everything in a row, of course. And uh, we and club understand this and uh, we must grow together and uh, change something for this. Um, I also love Zenit Kazan, Maxime. Okay. I Thank love, I, I, I love, well, I like the team. I like the team, I'll be honest. But I love their media team. With yeah. Zenit Kazan TV and all that they pump out on social media. Um, what's the strangest thing they've ever asked you to do <laughs> for their media TV or social media channels? You must have done some interesting things for them. Mm, we do something strange every year. <laughs> uh, it's uh, like some... Uh, uh, video what we recorded uh, before season maybe you see I don't know it's uh, some present uh, present uh, for our fans <clears throat> before some uh, uh, before Christmas uh, before some birthday or something like that and so we need uh, to wear some hats some uh, 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 special uh, special clothes because i i saw a video where you were getting out of bed like it was the morning and it was i think a documentary about how you spend your day Can you ah, remember yes that yes uh, yes it's uh it's what present on my um 30th birthday ah, okay <laughs> no they are brilliant yeah, it's, it's, the zenit kazan media team are brilliant and uh, yeah, yeah even, we take ideas inspiration from them um, but you, you un understand and accept the media side of being a professional volleyball player, don't you? You, you understand that it's not just on the court. Because I oh. was looking through your Instagram, uh, Maxime, and I saw this post. Oh, lovely photo. Great sandals. Can, can you remember the, this post? It was, I think, 2018. Uh-huh. Yes, I remember. So for the listeners, I'm just going to read the Google translation of that post. Basically, you say, I understand that um, people care about sports and especially volleyball. I realize that young people are looking at me and that I'm a public person and it is not just popularity. This is a great responsibility and it's important that people who follow my career not only see the external shell, but they understand what is behind it. What are my values, um, sport, health, nutrition, and what I'm interested in? Um, and I want to make my post as useful and as interesting for the fans. That's a short summary of the, the message. And I thought that was lovely because that's a player basically yeah, saying, yeah. I know I have responsibility and I want you to tell me and, and help me deliver on that responsibility. What, what made you post that? Was there, what motivated you to post that message? Um, because maybe <clears throat> I, um, uh, registered in Instagram in this year, and uh, mm, uh, I uh, wrote about a reason uh, uh, why I did it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, I uh, wanted uh, that uh, people understand what I uh, want to do, to have relationship with fans, of course. And uh, it's uh, for me, it's uh, responsibility uh, that I great player, and uh, a lot of people uh, follow me, uh, chat me. Yeah, like that. is that is that one of the reasons you're you're focusing on learning English more? You mentioned you were learning English for a long uh, time, maybe but. But more now. Uh, yes, yes, I want also, and uh, in future I want to to have life in English because a lot of uh, fans from Brazil, from uh, Iran, from Italy ask me when I uh, when I do live uh, with my fans. Oh, Maxim, why uh, you don't speak English? Okay. 
uh, do this, try, okay, maybe I, and I answer, okay, maybe in future I will try, and, but not, not yet, not now. Well, hopefully they'll be very pleased to hear from you in English now. Um, what's it like then to have those fans around the world? You mentioned there Italy and Brazil and Iran, just to name a few of the countries where people know who you are and, and really admire you. So what's that like for you? Uh, it's uh, important for me. Yes, uh, I understand that um, uh, people... Uh, follow me not only in Russian country and uh, also around the world and uh, that uh, why also play in volleyball and uh, uh, registered it in Instagram or in the social uh, network yeah amazing amazing uh, right then Matt what else shall we cover here I, I wanted to ask Maxime um, so you were included in the team of the decade recently. Um, so we started a new series where we get some of the best coaches in the world, best brains in volleyball to discuss a topic and then come up with like a, a conclusion. And the topic was the team of the decade, 2010, 2019. And you were included as the opposite hitter, not the receiver. You'd probably be pleased to hear, but as the opposite <laughs> hitter. Um, have you seen that or have you watched any of that, that video and heard the discussion about you and that uh, position yes. yes yes i've seen on youtube this video and what what is your reaction i mean you win a lot of individual awards and i know that the team success is, is always the priority but team of the decade that is something isn't it it's uh, of course it's pleasure for me because uh, it's uh, really uh, great coaches uh, who choose who choosing and uh, uh, but uh, for me it, I uh, like I said in the interview a lot of time more important uh, to win something of course and uh, that uh, coaches choose me of course uh, it's also uh, make me motivation more and uh, inspires me to work more hard in future of course wow. Wow. It's, uh, yes it's uh, winning and uh, uh, choosing like that uh, inspires me and um, uh, for work more hard. Can we talk then about one of your biggest team successes at, at London 2012? Because that was the last time that the three of us were in the, <laughs> were in the same place. Now, if you count Zoom as the same place, but <laughs> so London 2012, we were all there with completely different roles. So I was kind of the, the, the technical manager overseeing the, the sports side of things. Dave was working on the sport presentation and you were working on scoring points for your team. What do you remember about the whole event in, in London? Because it was obviously fond memories for Dave and I, but as someone who came to the event, what do you remember about the event? Um, I remember it was time when I was in London in England and I, uh, so like this country because uh, our um, uh, hall uh, was uh, in another side in London and uh, we uh, went uh, through all city and uh, I, I saw everything and I like its atmosphere was uh, one of the best in Olympic uh, maybe because we win after I don't know <laughs> but I, I like that atmosphere and uh, everything uh, well, uh, was great for me, for our team, for Russian delegation in general. And, uh, uh, yes, and uh, uh, the, <clears throat> the, imp uh, the important uh, also that we win this tournament because it's the first time in uh, Russian history it uh, was very important for um, for popular um, in Russian, in, uh, for popular volleyball in Russia. What did the games feel like themselves? Because you mentioned the atmosphere there, and it was fifteen thousand in the arena, and it was always full. 
but a lot of those people will have been watching volleyball for the first time, which I find incredible for an Olympic Games. So what did it feel like to, to play and perform in front of those people? Oh, it's, I think it's uh, uh, the best uh, atmosphere where I, we played. Uh, yes, because uh, uh, when, we, uh, when we went uh, to London, we know that uh, volleyball is not popular sport in London and in England, of course. But on each game was a uh, uh, great atmosphere. A lot of people uh, watch the game and uh, go. And uh, of course, it's, uh, it's very important for us, for sportsmen, because uh, it's easy to play uh, when uh, uh, a lot of uh, fans uh, follow uh, you and cheats. <laughs> and the the final is something of a an iconic moment, I guess, in volleyball because obviously you were losing two nil, and then you came back and won. And there was obviously a tactical change by the team, and and Bezersky moved to opposite, etc. What do you remember about the sh the change in momentum? Because it must have been tough, hard in those first two sets, but once you started the third set, it all felt different. For me, I mean, I wasn't even playing. It felt different. Uh, yes, um, we played uh, <clears throat> first and second set like uh, we must to win, of course. And uh, uh, we uh, didn't have uh, like uh, some freedom, you know, and it's difficult to play like that. And uh, when a coach uh, changed uh, me and Muserski and... Uh, um, uh, Opposite, not uh, position for Muserski, and never played there. And uh, also, uh, like me, receiver, I never played uh, in big tournament like receiver. And uh, okay, we we think nothing after this, and only only play play like uh, we can. What what was the reaction of the team when when your coach said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put Mazerski opposite. You're going to receive a... Did you... I don't want to say, did you think he was joking, but did you think, really? <laughs> or did you just no, say, no, okay, it's... okay, we do it? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, we say, okay, we do it because uh, everyone uh, believes in coach because we are all team and we are together every time. Yeah. Must just be, must be an interesting moment because... No one saw it coming. I mean, from a from a fan point of view, a spectator point of view, I don't think anyone expected it. So, yeah, it was a brave decision, but obviously a, a brilliant one. Yeah, it's a difficult decision for coach because if we lost uh, uh, three uh, three zero, it's uh, I think uh, he was fired immediately, and <laughs> Maybe. of course, and yeah, difficult decision, but. It's one of uh, the great decision in uh, its history now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. Absolutely. If, if there was to be a documentary about volleyball, I would love it to be about that yeah. event. Um, uh, what did you do as a team that night when you were Olympic champions? Uh, we went uh, for a walk to London, of course, uh, all together, and uh, went to Russian house. You know, it's in, in each Olympic, Olympic Games, a Russian delegation a delegation opened some uh, Russian uh, house uh, where you can uh, go uh, and uh, famous people uh, came uh, to this house for concert, for relax, you know, and we went to this house, the first and uh, second, we went for a walk around the London. Uh, so were you walking with your medals? Mm, I don't remember. <laughs> Just imagine them walk, <laughs> but, uh, walking but through maybe. London with their medals. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> maybe, but maybe. <laughs> you imagine just just a bunch of guys all over two meters tall walking through London. Yeah. With gold medals. <laughs> um, have you have you been back to London since? Uh, sorry. Have you returned to London since the Olympics? Uh, no, I want so much. Uh, I want so much, but uh, I don't have a chance now. But maybe in future, with my family, I want. Uh, I want to. 
Because I guess time time is always the issue, isn't it, for volleyball players? And now you have time, but obviously with the situation we've had, you've not been yes. able to go. <laughs> yes, so. now we have time, but we sit <laughs> in quarantine. <laughs> right. We wanted to just finish this this little um, podcast bit, Maxime, with a with a little ch- a game or a challenge for you. Mm-hmm. Could you give us your top five um, favorite moments from your career? So I'm assuming that the Olympic gold will be number one or two or whatever. But can you just give us like your top five moments from your career? Uh, first one, of course, uh, when we win Olympic Games. Um, second, uh, when I changed the club. I mean, uh, from Yaroslav to Kazan. Uh, third, when we won uh, first time uh, Liga Champions. It was in uh, Lodz, I think, in Poland. Um, fourth, um, when uh, we win um, Liga Champions in um, in Poland also, when we lost 2-0 against uh, Trenta. I don't remember, it was... Uh, Four or three years ago, yeah, in uh, in Katowice, yeah, I think. yes, and fifth um, uh, when uh, we won the European Championship in uh, twenty seventeen. Yeah. So yeah, I've got all got four of them, but the number four, I just wanted to check. Um, first, it's when uh, we won um, Liga Champions in, uh, I don't remember the year, maybe uh, 15 in Berlin, yeah. uh, 16, maybe just, 16. Just imagine, Matt, winning so many Champions Leagues that you can't remember which year. <laughs> the one that you... I was thinking the same. <laughs> We don't normally have this problem. Which year did I win that one? Oh, amazing. Because the one that sticks in my mind is the one where you had the gold uh, tops on. That was 2018 in Kazan. Yeah. Ah, also. Yes, I think it will be better, yeah. So I do you want to it's... maybe do number four? Yeah it's, uh, yeah, it's more important for me, yeah. Okay, can you just do number four again and just say, okay, number four? Okay. Yeah. Uh, number four uh, for me when uh, we won the uh, league champions in Kazan in 2018. Brilliant. So, so that was your top five. Not not that this matters in the grand scheme of things, but I commentated on that game for CV Maxime, and I was supposed to be joining you in Kazan, and I've never been to Russia before. And I couldn't get a visa, so I had to do it from a broom closet in Vienna instead. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Did you walk there? Huh? Uh, no, well, I, I, worked, I worked there and it was an amazing game and I loved watching it, but it just seemed like it, it was so special, especially the way the game went as well. It was an amazing final, wasn't it? And then the moment where Leon served the ace and you all had the gold shirts on at the end and oh, it was, just seemed, seemed like a special moment for everyone involved, that did. How was it different winning the Champions League at home? Because you, you obviously have won it a lot, but to win it at home must have been different. Uh, yes, it's uh, very difficult to play at home. Yeah, because uh, all people uh, wait, uh, you win. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, if you win uh, League of Champions four times before, everyone uh, waits uh, that you... You do this at home uh, a few times. <laughs> I love the word wait, Dave. It's like the fans are just waiting to win it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. You can, you can imagine, but after so much success, and, and Dave and I are actually Manchester United fans. It's one mm-hmm. thing we have in common. Mm-hmm. And there was a period where we would just wait to win the next, next league, wouldn't we, Dave, with oh. football? So I can imagine it from a Kazan point of view. You're fan uh, Manchester United? Yeah. 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 Which, which yeah, is your yeah, team? I like to... Oh, you like? I them? like too. Yeah. I like too Manchester United. Yeah, oh, good wow. man, yes. wow. my man. <laughs> <laughs> I like England Finland, uh, England England uh, Championship, of course, and uh, I like Manchester United. But uh, Manchester United uh, when uh, was uh, with Ferguson. Yeah. now it's, it's different now. Yeah, 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 different now. Yeah. Okay, we will see maybe in future. Uh, oh, I hope so. Yeah, this has been so brilliant. Thank you very much and uh, good luck.
Thank you very much. Have a nice day and good luck. See you.